Ladies and gents, thank you so much for tuning in today. You're listening to the Through Your Father's Eyes podcast with me, Liam Gillen. I'm a business owner, creator, and father to my beautiful, beautiful son, Isaac. I cover my life as being a dad, entrepreneurship, and business, talking openly regarding mental health and life experiences. I think with a podcast name like Through Your Father's Eyes, I need to speak about my experience of becoming a dad. That would make sense, right? So gather around kids, this is the tale of the birds and the bees. <laughs> I'm joking, of course. Uh, that's for another episode. So my story actually starts around July 2017. 2017 was not only a massive year for me, but in April, I made the leap to go self-employed. In May, my car blew up. In July, I found out I was going to be a dad. And then in September, I fucked off to Asia. So with everything, obviously 2017 was a phenomenal and kind of groundbreaking year for me. So I'm going to try and avoid as many personal details whilst hopefully still giving you a bit of an insight as to how parenthood started for me. I would like to respect the privacy of Isaac's mum. However, with myself, I'm not really too bothered. So hopefully this is entertaining and you get a little bit of an insight into how parenthood started for me. So fatherhood, parenthood, officially growing up, it all started between, it was either June or July. It all seems like a bit of a blur to me now. It started by receiving a text message from Isaac's mum, who was my ex at the time. We had split up several months prior to us both finding out. So I believe it was around the five and a half month mark where Isaac's mum obviously got some signs of being pregnant, obviously being five and a half months in. I think it was actually, it started from a joke from someone at her work. Then after tests and obviously seeing the doctor, that's when she found out that she was pregnant. So following that, she texted me and then we went out for a little drive. We went out for a little walk. It was just around the park, just behind where I lived. So it wasn't too far away, just in case I needed to do a runner. But I had absolutely no idea what she wanted to talk about. It was here that even though it was a nice walk and it was nice to catch up, she explained everything to me. And obviously we were both gobsmacked. My natural reactions was, am I being punked? I remember looking around and I looked at her. Then I'm looking around. I'm like, are you kidding me? What? Am I being punked? Am I being punked? I was expecting like a TV crew to come out and laugh in my face that we tricked you but that wasn't the case after saying what was probably more than 10 times are you kidding me am i being punked are you sure it was then it was the little baffling moment of wow okay this is happening so it's always been in my foundation and i don't know if this was something taught by my dad or if this was something that i picked up somewhere but ever since i've been old enough to do the business it always takes two to tango that's always been a bit of a saying in my head it always takes two to tango so with whatever responsibilities that come if a girl does obviously come up to you and say obviously she's pregnant and the time ends and obviously you know everything is legit it does take two to tango so it sounds stupid it doesn't take one person to get pregnant so my natural reactions after thinking am i being punked it was just generally asking how she was what can i do to help right now because obviously this is all very new this is a changing situation for us both one of the questions i obviously asked as well like do your parents know have you told any friends or family obviously she told her parents and i just thought instantly then once i asked that how the fuck am i gonna tell my parents it was the most daunting in time and I can't tell you how much anxiety and pressure there was but obviously we had to do what we had to do so I remember driving us both back to her parents and I don't know if I cried that that part of my life is such a blur now you can imagine if I did cry I don't know if I cried or if I walked in with my head down but I needed to just say to her parents how we're gonna get through this how I'm gonna be there for everything this isn't just gonna be like another Jeremy Kyle story I'm gonna do everything I can in my power to be there with that obviously I was shitting myself I thought that they were gonna scream in my face I thought that her dad was going to be all up in my face like shouting at me but they wasn't they was really supportive and they listened which was obviously fantastic because well to be fair I was more of the listener than the talkative person then because I was speechless but I knew they probably had judgments because we wasn't together but I had to assure them obviously that I was going to be there throughout everything I think before finding out I was going to be a dad, I went through like a phase in 2017, obviously when I went self-employed, feeling on top of the world. With that feeling, I actually had enough money to go and treat myself to a really nice trip away, not just your standard holiday. So I decided that I wanted to go uh, to Asia and I will talk about this in another episode. However, I did book a trip to Asia for four, it was over four or five weeks. At any stage in any pregnancy, this is a hurdle, obviously. 
It's a no-go in many people's eyes. However, the trip was fully paid for. Obviously, the situation was we wasn't together, but I asked my family's advice. I asked her advice. I asked her parents' advice. I asked everyone, like, should I go on this? Should I not go on this? Should I be here? Should I? Am I actually being beneficial by being here? Or is it even better of me being out of the way? You know, there's so many questions to possibly ask. I not only needed to do this for what was right for us and the baby, and it was given advice that I needed to do what was right for myself as well, because obviously, this was a once in a lifetime somewhat experience. And when you have a baby, you don't obviously have that time and that flexibility to be able to do four or five week holidays. Obviously, I'm quite lucky that I'm self-employed. However, in a normal nine till five, having a baby, you can't really do four or five week holidays. So following that, I went home that evening and the holiday wasn't even a thought process then. I'm gonna talk about that at another point or in another episode. I remember driving home, I was sweating. (laughs) I wish I could tell you now how nerve wracking it was, but I went home that evening and I had dinner with my mum and my sister. I think my niece was there at the time. I had to tell them, obviously, how can I sit down I even remember, I think we had sausage and mash. It was so vividly imprinted in my mind because I was so nervous. But sorry, I feel nervous now talking to you guys. So I told them. I told them I was going to be a dad. And I think I remember my sister shouting, saying, I fucking knew it. Because what actually happened is she had a reading earlier on this year from, I don't know what they're called, like psychics or something like that. But she had a reading and the psychic actually said, she was told that, is your brother having a baby? And obviously she was like, no. But obviously now the situation was, I wasn't then having a baby. So it was absolutely nerve wracking. And I can't really explain how nerve wracking it was, but I couldn't be more thankful and this is almost like a a public thank you now in case I've never said it enough to my family and her family even though everyone's had their ups and downs there's been no arguments there's been no awkwardness between the families and I just thank you all so much for obviously being there for me and Isaac's mum and for Isaac as well so with that the weeks and the months followed and my departure as you would say was a few days away but there was many things to do and preparations and obviously lots of things to discuss and one of the things that was a massive highlight for me was was going to the scan. That alone, like if you're a single lady going through this by yourself, I have so much respect for you because it's so daunting. Like I was sitting with Isaac's mum in the hallways and stuff and they can be quite lonely and you could be sitting in there for quite a while. However, we had the scan photos and it was amazing to see a little human on the screen with her name obviously at the top and just seeing like a heartbeat or a leg or the head, like a little face, it was was beautiful, but we didn't want to find out the sex because there's only so many natural surprises you can have in life. And we just thought obviously that is gonna be one of like the ultimate highlights in our lives, finding out if we're gonna have a little boy or if we're gonna have a little girl. There was a lot of speculation. Everyone was saying, oh, cause she's carrying it this kind of size. She's gonna have a boy. She's carrying this size. She fancies this, she fancies that. So she's gonna have a girl. uncertain so it was the best decision we ever made I think well for me it was the best decision that I ever agreed to so it was around the time that I was leaving for the trip and I had made it clear to every single person that was involved in our lives that my return date is four weeks before the due date but I've got enough money if anything happens get on the phone to me straight away I will be on the next flight the first flight possible however I've got to get back to the UK I have the capabilities of being able to get back because I do not want to miss the birth of my baby. I nearly said my baby boy, but my baby, I did not want to miss that. And I think that gave them obviously a lot of security knowing that I I could be back within half a day or a day. So even though I was the other side of the world, I wasn't as far away as what they probably thought I was. So anyway, my trip happened and it was a phenomenal experience. I get back and everyone in my family's healthy. Isaac's mum's happy and healthy and in great spirits. And But we'd kept contact the whole time I was away. So it was nice to see the updates and it didn't really feel like I was as far away as what I actually was. But talking on a more serious level with what it was like myself becoming a dad, when I got back from that trip, I actually remember on occasions that, and I haven't ever mentioned this to anyone. The fact that I'm saying this over a recording now is almost exclusivity, but it's not the nicest kind of message I wanna put out to people. But there were certain occasions where I'd got back and nothing was the same. Everything was completely different and I couldn't handle it. So there was on the one occasion that I drove to different places, it was about 11 o'clock at night and I was just driving. I was driving down South End Seafront. I was driving 
in and out of roads just trying to find somewhere to go to sit down and I ended up at Hadley Castle and it was around the half 11 point at this point and I remember I walked up towards where the castle is with half a flask of whiskey uh, it was just something I had on me and I cried I just sat there and I cried I couldn't even put into words what it was about I couldn't pinpoint one thing that I was upset about. I think it was just an overwhelming feeling of feeling lost because everything that I was used to was changing. I just, the only things I remember from that night is crying, which sounds pathetic now, but it's just what happened. Yeah, so I I was crying, uh, I was drinking whiskey and it was so cold. It was like late November. On another occasion, I drove to Shoebury and if you know Shoebury, you know where the jetty is, but this is where they kind of launched the jet skis and the boats. And I just sat at the top of the hill, just where they launched the boats in my car and this is on another occasion but this was probably around the same timing of 11 half 11 at night and I couldn't stop looking at the skyline I could only faintly make out the sea to the sky and I actually remember almost hallucinating I was actually envisioning being in Vietnam if any of you have ever seen the Top Gear special in Vietnam you know of a place called Hay Long Bay and I remember looking out seeing the not so clear definition between the sea and the sky and it just took me to a point where we was in Vietnam we was in Heilong Bay and there was a moment there was a sight when we was all in this boat and we was just going back towards the shore we we're in between these mountains and there was this breathtaking and I can only say it was beautiful but this absolutely beautiful sunset like you've got the mountains you've got the, the sunset you've got the really calm water I can't explain how breathtaking it was but the stillness of the water that night in Shubri and the reflection of the stars it, that was equally I wouldn't say it's equally beautiful but it just transcended me into a different headspace and I kind of had to get out have a little walk before I carried on driving I didn't have my whiskey that time which is bad I'm going to say that before because I'm I'm sure someone was probably thinking that but that's not something that's obviously on occasion I just done it then and there however that was a powerful kind of experience for me it wasn't out of a good mindset it was I was actually in a very very dark place but you might be thinking why do I mention this why was you thinking like this because as a man as a male as a figure that people look to when a family needs support him I needed an escape everything was changing beyond my control and I literally had zero say finding out I was gonna be a dad I had no say in that like obviously Isaac's mum had no say in that as well but just saying it from my perspective I had zero say in everything that was happening I had to accept the circumstances but I couldn't show anyone that how could I like that would just be showing signs of weakness which I know now is a bad thing but at the time I just couldn't sorry I might have said that wrong but I couldn't show signs of weakness because in my eyes that was a bad thing I'm only here to tell people on this podcast through your father's eyes podcast how it is from my perspective I can't talk from anyone else's perspective and I can't talk on behalf of anyone else this is just really what happened for me so after many hospital visits and I must say the the car parking fees at a hospital are an absolute joke like be prepared guys if you're a up-and-coming parent to have a second job coming in because the fees of what a car park costs at a hospital is a joke However, Isaac's mum was a few days over her due date, so we had all of her bags ready, and it was one point in the evening, and I think it was around six o'clock, where we had to obviously rush into the hospital, and the process of giving birth started. So it was actually horrifying, guys, and I want to talk to the guys that might be listening to this, but I think we don't give ladies enough praise, because I saw a diagram, or a chart, however you want to call it, but it was a size difference chart. (laughs) Sorry, I can't say this maturely, but it was the difference sizes a woman goes through when she's dilated and I shit you not 10 centimeters 10 centimeters don't really sound like much like you, if you think about 10 centimeters you're like okay or whatever that is oh my god my legs were turning and clutching at three centimeters looking at these charts it was awful so a 10 centimeter chart I'm absolutely scarred for life but Isaac was born in the morning he was born at 8 20 a.m and it was literally just as the sun was rising it was so beautiful I remember looking at Isaac's nan and we both looked at the sunrise and it was almost a Vietnam moment again but something equally as beautiful more beautiful don't judge me yeah that was magical and I screamed when he came out and I found out it was a boy oh my god I can't tell you what that felt like because as a guy you always want that like I I think I would be too protective if I had a little girl I would be almost like a horrible dad because they're not seeing no one they're not allowed boyfriends but (laughs) but 
having a little man, it was incredible. But literally through all of that, seeing my son for the first time, the 10 centimeter chart still scared me, but it was nothing compared to how hard that she was squeezing my hand. That hurt guys, but it was it, obviously compared to that chart, I was not I was not complaining in the slightest. Following that day, we did have members of family visit to meet my son. It was incredible. And I, I can't even name the room that the ladies go in afterwards, but I can just imagine it being the first stop on the way to hell. It's boiling hot, it's sweaty, bloody kids screaming all day, all night. It's impossible to sleep because it's so bloody hot in these rooms. But I think some new parents have to stay in these rooms for a little while. And we was quite fortunate that we didn't have to stay in them for too long. I think it was only just a couple of days. But I was quite fortunate that at one point I did manage to go home for a few hours, have a little cat nap, have a little shower, rush back. I might have even rushed back with some food because obviously that's the standard thing you've got to do. Maybe grab a cheeky Maccas. But with that, whilst I was at home, we did have more family visit, which was lovely. And obviously just giving their support as well and I really can't emphasize what it's like in these rooms and if you are a single parent and what I would envision is it not being very nice at all because if you haven't really got any support and if you haven't got someone that's there by your side being in these rooms is, is quite unnerving really but I have to say all the nurses all the staff and I'm not just saying this because of everything that's happened lately the staff were amazing and I feel for them too because obviously they've got to work in these environments 24 7 however the drive home with little man and Isaac's mum was terrifying I I made a sign so in my office I made three signs for my car I stuck them in the two side windows and on the back window literally in multicolors drive slow newborn on board and I think I must have drove home no faster than 15 miles an hour at the newborn stage guys the newborn stage is incredible their little cries aren't even like real cries but they're still very much loud enough to keep you awake at night. I think I remember I done quite a lot of the, the night feeds to start off with. I, I'm not sure if that was for the first few months, but this I felt was like the least I can do because everything that Isaac's mum had gone through, given birth, <laughs> I just was like, you know what? You deserve some sleep. Just let me do the night feeds. It's fine. As long as I can have a nap during the day, that's fine. And I, I was still having nightmares about that 10 centimeter chart that I saw. So you sleep as much as you want. But so many people asked, and I will say this, so many people people asked, did I look down the business end? And I'm a guy, of course, I'm curious, I'm nosy, I was intrigued. And it's safe to say, I don't envy what women go through. As I was saying, the newborn stage was incredible. The countless bottles that you make, the constant washing up, the unlimited supply of nappies that you need. When you go out and you forget all of the baby wipes that you've got, absolutely hysterical, wow. <laughs> but you have to laugh because you look at their little newborn nappies and their incredibly tiny little bums and their little pictures legs and you just think how are they gonna fit in that little newborn nappy it's just a warming experience guys and I think probably the best investment I probably made at that time and I really can't recommend this enough best investment I made at that time was actually a Google pixel this is not sponsored I'm just saying the Google pixel literally had unlimited storage and obviously me being me being a photographer I couldn't help but take a million photos of this little man every little half smile every eye opening I just loved it all I just felt like a constant proud dad and it was was just it was so lovely it was so great so obviously Isaac is now two and a half and I think I've noticed a lot of changes but the changes started really happening around the eight month mark every new stage I've enjoyed more than the previous so I love the newborn stage but when he started getting a little bit of a personality around the eight month mark that was then my favorite and then when he was a year and a half and then when he was two and when he was doing all of these new things so when he started counting when he started walking my favorite show if anyone knows me my favorite show is a show called Al Outlander. He sung the, the full theme tune to that one day, like out of the blue. He didn't say a few words. He sung the whole thing and I, I couldn't have felt prouder. It was, <laughs> it was incredible. But then that got topped when he said one to 10 in Spanish for the first time. It, it's just incredible, guys. And his little cheeky smile and the personality that he has grown, it just shows that even as imperfect as a person you might feel, the best asset that you can give any baby is your time. And I, I'm going to say that one more time the best asset that you can give any baby is your time. If you're a new dad listening to this, or maybe you're gonna be a new parent, you may be in a similar boat to what I was, or it may be in a better situation or even a worse situation. But if I could give any advice personally, not stolen from the internet and nothing gimmicky, all real from me. First of all, I would say you need to stay calm. Remember what you had to go through. It took two to tango, so there's no one to blame in this situation. You're both in this situation together. As a guy, there's no point getting all macho and defensive about it. Listen more than you want to talk, but ask 
ask questions, but just don't be a condescending dickhead if you do ask a question. Like asking a girl, was you not on the pill? Or did you not think to be more careful? These are not only disrespectful guys, but they don't help the situation. And you look immature. You look like a child if you ever ask these. So try even as upset or even if you are angry, just don't be angry towards the girl because like I said many times, it takes two to tango guys. Understanding how you have to understand how it may feel from the girl's perspective. Not only, and it, right, okay, take yourself out of this perspective for the minute where we're not constantly thinking about you. Think about the woman for a minute. Not only is your life going to change, but her life's going to change. Her body's going to change. Her hormones are going to fluctuate all the time now. Her goals, her dream job that she might have wanted, her tits are going to change. Everything is going to change for this woman. And obviously, guys have it really easy, but you're both in this position together. And if you're at an early stage, and obviously, depending on your views, you may be in a situation where it doesn't have to happen. Obviously, not promoting anything. You have to be upfront with one another. Ultimately, guys, and I'm going to say this directly to the guys out there. The decision does lie with the woman. That's it. You can't guilt trip her. You can't pressure her into a different decision. But equally, ladies, if there's any ladies listening to this, babies are not a trap to keep a guy. They are not used to be punishment or to have blindly. They are hard. Childbirth is hard. And I'm not saying that because I saw the 10 centimeter chart. I'm just saying from my own experience that my hand hurt pretty much. And seeing that 10 centimeter chart was pretty terrifying. So with that, babies shouldn't be brought into the world in spite they are beautiful they are amazing and i might sound a bit soppy saying all this but they are truly incredible when you when you do have a baby but on so many times you do hear the odd story where there's a looney tune woman and she's kind of holding up a guy against his will with a baby story of some sort other words of advice that i would say so i'm going to round these up into a few bullet points so gents you need to ultimately flick the switch as soon as you find out that parenthood is coming try to give your partner the support that not only that maybe you'd want but how they want to be supported because every woman's different find out what she wants what she needs be there for her Now's the time to start saving. Save as much as you can, but don't worry about trying to make a million pound business. That's not what it's all about, being a parent, but just keep working on what you do. Like work hard, try and do a bit of overtime if you can and cut back on silly outgoings that maybe you're spending on. Prepare to have a family. That's what I'm saying here. So keep your money in your pocket and try and build for the future. Go to the baby classes. Guys, 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 listen to me right now. Go to the baby classes. I personally hated them. I didn't like them. You do tend to find that there's a lot of kind of what somewhat snobby people that go to them they're like oh my baby this and my baby that i can feel my baby feeling this and blah 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 however women do really like going and it's very informative and it just shows that you're committed to by going so if you can drive make it comfortable for the girl take her take a drink take a bag if she needs a bag wh whatever she needs obviously just be a genuine decent guy and just be supportive if you can so go to the baby classes you can copy me in this instance but obviously what i done straight off was i went to the parents house straight away just to reassure them that I am going to take care in the best way that I can and keep them in safe hands throughout. Obviously, my situations may be a little bit different to what yours might be, but just making that step by being a man, being an adult, going straight off and just talking to the parents will just put you in such a good light and only do this if you're truly committed to actually being there for, for them as a family tell your friends but don't tell them over text have a night out or have dinner somewhere i think i had a couple of dinners and a, a couple of very drunken nights out when i found out have an experience with your friends tell them don't tell them over text and definitely tell your friends before you tell the world so before you tell social media one thing I would say with telling your friends, and it is the unfortunate truth, but don't expect all of your friends to be happy for you because it can be an inconvenience for them. As horrible as that sounds, it really can be an inconvenience for them, but that doesn't matter anymore because you've now got a baby coming into the world and your little circle now has to be the absolute priority. So you will find that you actually do lose friends when you become a parent, but you will gain better friends and you gain a baby. There's, there's no greater feeling that I have in my life. And I've got quite quite a few things. I have no greater feeling but my son. The next point would be, be open about how you're feeling. So if you're not in the position to be able to have a baby, be vocal about it, but be respectful. Let's face it, there's no real right time to be able to have a baby. And some people it's, well, the majority of people, it is a, I won't say accident, accident's the wrong word, but it is a spur on exciting moment for them. But I will truly say this, that the best parents, even some parents that I know, the best parents are the ones who battle through the storm, who do everything they can for their child, because I'm just gonna, you just can't, 
can't put a price on how much you love them. It's it's incredible, guys. So sorry, the next point. I keep going off onto how much I love my son. It's just so true. So back to the bullet points. Let your family help, but don't let them take over. You and your partner, you're gonna be parents. Talk to each other, listen to each other, take advice from your parents, but it's okay to not always follow the rules that they want set out. They have their best intentions for you, but you need to have your best intentions for your partner, your spouse, and the baby. And if you are finding yourself overwhelmed, it's perfectly normal, trust me. So even think back to what I said a few moments ago about how I felt. If you do have spouts of bad mental health, talk to your partner, talk to someone, reach out to a friend, even seek counseling if you need that, because counseling is really not a bad thing. However, don't do what I've done. Don't keep quiet. I wish I had spoke to more people because I it would have really have helped me, but it's not healthy. It wasn't healthy for my head. But if I can give you any advice, that like that's the key bit talk to people at minimum talk to your partner my last point would be don't overlook life insurance guys girls you want to be there for your your partner and you want to be there for your baby and even if there's a point where you're not here anymore having life insurance can be such a vital asset for them just to provide them security for obviously if anything does happen everyone doesn't want to die but there's roughly 250,000 people that don't wake up every day so just take each day as it comes and that sounded really negative but life isn't promised so once you have a baby in the world don't overlook life insurance because it could happen to anyone i just think that fundamentally you need to understand parenthood is a partnership in every circumstance be that if you're married if you're divorced together or not together you need to really realize and you need to create that unity and love and respect for one another even if you're not together for when your baby does come into this world there's going to be a bubble around them i'm so blessed and i can't shout this loud enough i'm so blessed that isaac has the mum that he's got because she has done a phenomenal job since he's been born and i just can't thank her and her family enough i can't think of anyone else that i would want to raise my son besides her apart from myself obviously i think i'm a pretty good dad but seriously it's you you just have to be appreciative and I really am appreciative for everyone that's in our lives because she's got a really good family she's got really good friends I've got really good family and friends and it's just it works really well and I, I am a lucky one I'm very lucky in the situation that I am in with that you have to gain maturity throughout this whole experience you need to gain maturity maturity I'll say that one more time does play a vital role leading into when you're having a baby when you're when the baby's arriving you need to be an adult in every circumstance I think even if you're a young person Person. even if you're a teenager and you're having a baby you need to act like an adult guys trust me when the little one is here there's more than enough time to be able to play pull stupid faces you, mate the amount of toys that you can get them and you just kind of revert back to like immature days that's great but during the whole process and throughout just be an adult with the uh, the decisions that you're going to make because as i've said so many times in this podcast already having a baby is a wonderful experience and one thing i really would recommend is take as many videos photos log your experiences and do like little vlog style videos of yourself even invest in something like a little gopro that fits in your pocket or fits in your bag just record all of the little moments because they for me i'm not just milking this they are the best and most valuable memories for me if my office burnt down if all of my cameras went i wouldn't be upset because i have all of them photos and memories stored but that's not an invite to steal my cameras please don't do that guys so if you are in a position where you might be able to relate to me like if there's stories obviously that you've gone through if you are a parent if you've gone through a hard time or if you've gone through a good time feel free please reach out to me on social media you can find me at through your father's eyes podcast on twitter it is at father's thoughts so with everything said i want to hear your experiences if you've got any other little bits of advice that you would give leave them in the comments or reach out send a message to me i do actually think i could do a whole other podcast on just advice that i would give up and coming dads so with that said i will catch you guys in the next podcast thank you so much for listening today you've been listening to me liam gillen and you've been listening to Through Your Father's Eyes podcast. See you soon, guys. Have a good day.